His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa. The meeting reviewed topics related to strengthening Bahrain's development process and the major projects and plans that includes in various sectors to serve the country and its citizens. His Majesty expressed pride in His Royal Highness's continuous efforts in serving Bahrain and enhancing its development in all fields, consolidating its progress, competitiveness and advanced rankings in development indicators and leading the government's action towards more achievements initiatives and programs to develop services offered to citizens and residents. His Majesty the King commended the speech delivered by His Royal Highness at the opening of the 19th edition of the Manama Dialogue, in which His Royal Highness emphasized that lasting peace will only be secured through giving the Palestinian people their legitimate rights to establish their own state through a two-state solution. The speech also asserted that hopes and aspirations of the Palestinian people must be at the center of post-crisis governance in Gaza. His Majesty the King praised the role and ongoing efforts of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation in providing urgent humanitarian aid to Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. His Majesty thanked all those involved in this noble effort, which embodies Bahrain's firm stance on providing support during various circumstances. As Mashi reiterated the importance of ensuring security and stability in the region, affirming that the international community must work towards securing just and comprehensive peace as a strategic option and uh, the only path to secure and the stability for the people of the region and the world. As Mashi emphasized Bahrain's firm position on uh, resolving disputes peacefully. As Mashi the King also praised the kingdom's successful efforts in organizing and hosting specialized regional and international exhibitions, conferences, and sporting events, which includes the 19th edition edition of Manama Dialogue and a number of international trade exhibitions as well as the fifth edition of the Bahrain International Trophy which consolidates Bahrain's leadership as one of the investment destinations and enhances its distinguished international reputation at various levels. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the efforts of the national caterers, which reflects their ability to organize successful conferences and exhibitions. His Majesty prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless the kingdom with further progress and prosperity at all levels. The personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of the Royal Court, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dana were present at the meeting. The opening speech of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister at the Manama Dialogue reviewed the most prominent developments taking place in the Gaza Strip and the Kingdom of Bahrain's firm a position towards the Palestinian cause. More in this report. The speeches of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at various events have always provided bright visions from which observers can derive wisdom and knowledge about ways to enhance global security and prosperity. This is what was embodied in the contents of His Royal Highness's speech at the opening of the Manama Dialogue, received international praise in addressing all challenges, differences and conflicts facing the world. So, building on that, we all know that this conflict didn't start on October the 7th. This latest escalation did, but the conflict has been an ongoing open wound in the Middle East for the past 80 years. And here's the kicker. No real security will ever be realized until a real two-state solution is found. So preserving this path to peace will demand strong leadership from us in the region and primarily from uh, the great powers and specifically from the United States. I be we believe that the United States is indispensable in leading this process. The speech began with a historical overview of the efforts that aim to achieve peace in the world with a clear vision of the course of events in the region and with complete transparency. The events in Gaza were the core of His Royal Highness's speech which gave an important description of the unfortunate situation occurring in the Gaza Strip, including bombing and loss of lives. His Royal Highness called to protect civilians and open safe corridors for the delivery of humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza in accordance with international law and expressed his rejection regarding forcefully displacing Palestinians. The speech of His Royal Highness renewed the firm positions of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its continued keenness to deepen international partnerships and push towards spreading peace, coexistence and harmony among peoples and countries. 
The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa met the Chief of the UK Defence Staff Admiral Sir Anthony David Radican and the UK Defence Senior Advisor to the Middle East and North Africa, Air Marshal Martin Elliott Sampson, on the sidelines of the 19th edition of the Manama Dialogue and the presence of the Defence Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah Naimi. The Commander-in-Chief praised the distinguished long-standing Bahraini-UK relations lauding the ongoing bilateral defence cooperation. The BDF Commander-in-Chief and the Chief of the UK Defence Staff signed a declaration of intent between the BDF and the UK Armed Forces, which aims to develop military cooperation between the two sides through the signing of a cooperation agreement that would broaden joint relations. The meeting was attended by senior BDF officers and the UK accompanying delegation. The BDF Commander-in-Chief also met with the Director General for International Affairs at the Defense Policy Bureau of the Japanese Ministry of Defense, Miura Jun, who is visiting Bahrain to participate in the 19th edition of the Madama Dialogue in the presence of the Defense Affairs Minister, Lieutenant General Abdullah Naimi. The BDF Commander-in-Chief affirmed the depth of Bahraini-Japanese relations across various fields, especially military cooperation. During the meeting, a Memorandum of Understanding on Cooperation and Exchange was signed between the BDF and the Japanese Ministry Ministry of Defense to enhance military relations between the two countries. The MOU was signed by the Assistant Chief of Staff for Human Resources, Major General Sheikh Ali bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Mira Jun. The meeting was attended by senior BDF officers and the Japanese accompanying delegation. The executive and legislative authorities held a meeting to review the details of the new program package that Tim Keen recently launched to create more promising opportunities for citizens, which came in accordance with the agreement between the executive and legislative authorities when preparing the draft general budget. The meeting was chaired by the Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed Lamsallam, the Shura Council Chairman Ali Salah, and the Minister of Labor Jamil Hamidan, in the presence of the Minister of Parliament Affairs Ghanem Al Bouainin, the Minister of Cabinet Affairs Hamad Al Malki, the Chair Chairman and members of the two councils financial and economic affairs committee, the CEO of Temkin, Maha Mufiz, and a number of officials. The speaker noted that the new program package emphasized taking into account the recent consequences between the recent consensus between the legislative and executive authorities when discussing the general budget. He stressed the parliamentary support for all projects, initiatives, and programs aimed at raising the wages of Bahrainis and enhancing recruitment programs. He emphasized the importance of the cooperation of all concerned parties with Temkin to achieve the goals of the new programs, noting the need to highlight the program's goals and objectives and the mechanism for their proper implementation. Meanwhile, the Shura chairman praised Temkin's efforts and the need to focus on raising the percentage of Bahrainis in leadership positions and following up and monitoring the implementation of programs to support the national economy, raise the wages of Bahrainis in the private sector, and improve the standards of living of Bahrainis. Families. As Saleh praised uh, the continued government support to consolidate the skills and competencies of Bahrainis working in the private sector. He noted that the programs that contribute to the rehabilitation and career development of citizens will have a positive impact on raising the employment rates of citizens and supporting the national workforce. For his part, the Minister of Labour affirmed the Ministry's keenness to strengthen cooperation with the legislative authority and in accord and coordination with Tim Keen to develop uh, the labour market. He highlighted the the importance of constructive cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities in implementing these programs and initiatives and achieving the desired goals. The chairman of uh, the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, chaired the council's weekly meeting where the council approved a draft law regarding air services between uh, Bahrain and Chile, which aims to enhance the bilateral cooperation, create new investments, and strengthen the economies of both countries. The council approved the draft law and referred it to the Representatives Council, which will be referred to the Prime Minister and then uh, to His Majesty the King. The activities of the second edition of Cityscape Bahrain 2023 concluded, with sales exceeding 240 million Bahraini dinars, recording an increase of more than 140% over the last year. On this occasion, the president of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau and chairman of the Supreme Organizing Committee of Cityscape Bahrain 2023, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the real estate sector in the kingdom is enjoying continuous growth and achieving unparalleled successes in the exhibition and conference industry 
three thanks to the attention it receives from His Majesty the King and the continuous follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He praised the great efforts made by government agencies and major real estate companies that contributed to the success of the exhibition. For his part, the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Real Estate Regulatory Authority, Engineer Islam Khalaf, praised the remarkable success achieved by Cityscape 2023, adding that this success is a reflection of the sector's keenness to support these huge investment events. The CEO of the Real Estate Regulatory Authority, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, affirmed that the success of the second edition of Cityscape 2023 is an extension of the government's support for the real estate sector and added that the exhibition this year achieved an unprecedented turnout of visitors. Cityscape Bahrain 2023 is considered one of the largest real estate events held in the Kingdom of Bahrain that presented many real estate projects and employed the latest modern technologies. The second edition of Cityscape Bahrain concluded with outstanding success, with visitors benefiting from the competitive advantages offered. Cityscape presented a large collection of real estate to its visitors in order for them to discover the details of various projects, new technologies and the future housing structure. Cityscape also represents a meeting point for home buyers and real estate investors to discover the best opportunities to purchase available real estate as it brings together many companies under one roof to learn about the real estate sector in Bahrain. The success of this exhibition was a result of Bahrain's provision of advanced infrastructure and logistical capabilities in addition to the laws and legislation regulating real estate which made it a competitive destination in the global real estate market. The 31st edition of Jewelry Arabia successfully concluded attracting a large number of brands from various countries in addition to Bahraini companies that displayed the latest designs of gold, jewelry, precious stones and precious and rare watches. More in this report. The visitors to Jewelry Arabia lived an unforgettable experience over the course of five days to learn about the latest fashion trends in the field of jewelry manufacturing and to listen closely to designers speaking about the story behind each piece of jewelry. In this edition, the turnout exceeded all expectations, prompting many international companies to reserve their places at the exhibition for the next season, which affirms the importance of the exhibition at the local level as a regional platform for marketing their latest jewelry innovations. Over the course of three decades, Jewelry Arabia continued to achieve success and attract an elite group of prominent exhibitors at the local and international levels, which has enhanced the event's contribution to supporting the gold and jewelry industry and displaying innovative designs for the first time in the region produced by major local and international companies and brands. The Interior Minister General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa received a British House of Lords delegation in the presence of Bahrain Ambassador to the UK Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, Chief of Public Security Lieutenant General Tariq Al Hassan, and Director General of Media and Security Culture Brigadier Mohammed bin Indina. The Interior Minister has welcomed the visit of the delegation members to Bahrain to participate in the 19th edition of the Manama Dialogue, in which the summit reviewed strategic, regional, and global topics, including peaceful coexistence and countering tick extremism. He hailed the bilateral ties between the two countries and their role in reinforcing regional security. The Minister briefed uh, the delegation on the efforts of the Interior Ministry to protect security and general safety, stressing the significance of cooperation, coordination, and exchanging security expertise. He highlighted the security and community initiatives and programs, including the alternative sanctions and open prisons program to promote community security. He noted that human rights are part of Bahraini society's culture and are reinforced by the support and vision of His Majesty the King. The two sides reviewed security cooperation and topics to contribute to regional stability. The Interior Minister, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received the Secretary General of the Islamic Military Counterterrorism Coalition, IMCTC, Major General Mohammed bin Saeed Al Mughedi, in the presence of the Chief of Public Security, Lieutenant General Tariq Al Hassan, and Director General of Media and Security Culture, Brigadier Mohammed bin Yana. The Interior Minister welcomed the official who was taking part in the 19th edition of the Manama Dialogue, which is considered a global platform to develop visions about security issues and challenges to promote joint work and regional and international security and peace. He asserted the dedication of the Interior Ministry to launch programs and initiatives to promote peaceful coexistence and extremism 
and encounter extremism uh, through education to reinforce tolerance, peace, and mutual respect, especially uh, the Man or Together program against violence and addiction to meet the royal visions of His Majesty the King. The meeting reviewed cooperation and coordination in various issues, including countering terrorism financing, money laundering, and cyberspace extremism to exchange expertise in facing security threats. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met uh, with the uh, Secretary General of the GCC, Jassim Libdewi, on the sidelines of the Manama Dialogue. The two sides discussed uh, the efforts exerted by the General Secretariat to promote joint Gulf cooperation in various fields in implementation of the directives of the leaders of the GCC in order to meet uh, the aspirations of GCC citizens and achieve the noble goals of the Council, in addition to discussing a number of issues of common concern. They signed an agreement between Bahrain and the GCC GCC on the headquarter at the on the headquarters of the Technical Communications Office in the Kingdom and a cooperation agreement between the Directorate of Foreign Trade and Industrial Property of the Ministry of Industry and Commerce and the GCC General Secretari Secretariat. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met the Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abu al -Ghait. The two sides reviewed the cooperation relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the League of Arab States and the efforts undertaken by the Secretary General to advance the process of joint Arab action and promote Arab cooperation to a more comprehensive level in order to meet the interests of Arab countries and the aspirations of, the people, of their people for security, stability and peace. They also discussed the ongoing Arab efforts to stop the war in the Gaza Strip, open safe passages for civilians civilians and the unimpeded delivery of humanitarian and relief aid. They also discussed the outcomes of the joint Arab Islamic Extraordinary Summit held in Riyadh on November 11th and ways to continue Arab efforts to push the peace process in the Middle East. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of State at the Federal Foreign Office of Germany, Tobias Lindner. The two sides discussed aspects of promoting bilateral cooperation between Bahrain and Germany in light of the close historical friendly relations between the two countries and ways to advance them in all fields. They also discussed developments in the situation in Gaza and its repercussions on security and stability in the region. And also the efforts being made to stop the war, release hostages and detainees, and provide safe corridors to deliver humanitarian aid to Gaza. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Armenia, Arafat Mizoyan, on the occasion of his visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain to participate in the Manama Dialogue. During the meeting, the relations of friendship and cooperation between the two countries were reviewed and ways to advance them to more comprehensive levels to serve common interests in addition to developments in the situation in Gaza and regional and international efforts aimed at stopping the war and avoiding its repercussions on security and stability in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the British uh, parliamentary delegation headed by Lord Nicholas uh, Soames on the sidelines of the 19th Manama Dialogue. The two sides discussed the strong, long-standing friendship relations between Bahrain and the UK and ways to develop them in various fields to serve the interests of the two countries and people, especially within the framework of the strategic dialogue that was recently launched to promote joint cooperation relations between the two countries. They also exchanged views on developments in Gaza and ways to stop the war in Gaza provide protection for civilians, deliver humanitarian aid, and advance efforts aimed at settling the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and establishing a just and lasting peace in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met uh, with the Chair of the NATO Military Committee, Admiral Rob Bauer, and the Assistant Secretary General for Political Affairs and Security Policy at NATO, Ambassador Boris uh, Ruj. They discussed uh, the existing cooperation relations between Bahrain and NATO in areas of common interest and exchanged views on current regional and international issues, including developments in Gaza and the efforts being made to stop the war, protect civilians and deliver humanitarian aid, and maintaining security and stability in the region.
Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs, Barbara Leaf, as part of her visit to Bahrain to participate in the 19th session of Manama Dialogue. The two sides reviewed the long-standing relations of friendship and strategic partnership between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States and discussed ways to further develop them at all levels to serve the interests of the two countries. They also exchanged views on the developments in the Gaza Strip, the international efforts required to reach a ceasefire, protect the civilian population, open safe corridors to facilitate the delivery of humanitarian and relief aid and the release of hostages and detainees in addition to the efforts to revive the peace process in the Middle East. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met a number of experts from American research centers who are taking part in the 19th session of Manama Dialogue. They exchanged views on the ongoing conflicts in the region and the repercussions on security, stability and the interests of the people of the world, including the war, including the war in the Gaza Strip and its negative and tragic effects on the Palestinian people. They also discussed ways to push forward the ceasefire efforts in Gaza, provide protection for civilians, deliver humanitarian and relief aid to the civilian population in the Strip and work to unify international efforts to end all conflicts in the Middle East due to the threat they pose to international peace and security. The meeting also discussed the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain to consolidate peace and human coexistence in the region as well as support regional efforts to promote security, stability and prosperity for all people of the region. Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the High Representative of the European Union EU for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borrell, as part of his visit to Bahrain to participate in the 19th session of the Manama Dialogue. The two sides discussed the Bahrain-EU cooperation and coordination in addition to ways to further develop them through promoting partnerships and mutual interests. They also discussed regional and international efforts to stop the war in Gaza, protect civilians and deliver relief and humanitarian aid to the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. They also reviewed ways to de-escalate and push forward international efforts aimed at reviving the peace process in the region to protect its people and safeguard their interests. The President of Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the first training prospect forum of customs affairs that attach or that attracted officers and 100 Interior Ministry affiliates. The President of Customs welcomed the attendees, highlighting the importance of the forum in implementing the initiatives of the first strategic goal of the Custom Affairs Strategy 2021-2024, aligning plans and programs with the Government's Action Plan, the Economic Vision 2030, and the policies of the World Customs Organization in addition to promoting cooperation with concerned authorities. He noted that Custom Affairs believes in human resources as the basic foundation of Customs work as it invests in the human element by providing it with the necessary knowledge and skills in developing its capabilities to improve efficiency and performance. At the end of the forum, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad honored the Training and Development Directorate of Custom Affairs, the Royal Academy of Police, and the Public Security Presidency for their various contributions, including preparing human and financial budgets for the organizational structure of Custom Affairs and the monitoring system. This workshop came after a lot of great work that have been done in the organization development in Bahrain Customs Affairs, and uh, we have invited Dr. Jack Phillips who is the founder of the ROI uh, methodology, how to measure the return on investment of a training. And this is very important to us here in Bahrain Customs is because we're trying to develop our human capital. And how to measure that is very critical for us today. So we're moving up to the next stages of how to develop this methodology. And uh, we have uh, used this methodology in our training programs and we have found out how we can benefit from it and how can we measure it and how to move to the next level. And I'm here to talk about the importance of investing in people and showing the value of that investment. Actually calculating the financial ROI when you invest in people. And what the customs team has done is to show the value of some of their learning programs all the way to the ROI, the return on investment. So we're here celebrating that and actually showing how that's done and encouraging more of that kind of work here. On nurturing the next generation by promoting cultural knowledge and professional pride in customs, 
um, as it was actually mentioned by uh, our uh, president of customs, that it's really important for us as managers to know how to share our knowledge and um, act as enablers for our team instead of barriers, as it's really important to achieve the, the strategic goals of customs. The Manama Dialogue has become one of the most important annual political events that Bahrain has succeeded in organizing, through which it has been able to attract world policymakers to share their visions regarding the security challenges facing the region. More on this report. Manama Dialogue, the unique events, enabled government ministers, policymakers, opinion forming, and business communities to debate the Middle East's most pressing foreign policy, defense, and security challenges. The three day event successfully concluded with an intense discussions and fruitful dialogues between senior officials from around the world. This year, it may be even more important than any other year. There is a crisis in the region, and Bahrain plays a very special role in bringing together experts, politicians, and officials from around the world to talk through these very challenging issues. And of course, you know that it's called the Manama Dialogue. Isn't it great that we can have dialogue instead of other ways of addressing this problem? On its last day, the forum hosted the fifth plenary session on politics of energy security and concluded with a session focused on the future Middle East. One of the real benefits that I have found certainly of, of the dialogue is that it brings together military, security, diplomatic, but also civil society, media, uh, and also the young leaders, which is really, really interesting from all around the region. It's a really unique opportunity for us from Ireland to meet a very wide range of people in the sidelines of the meeting and obviously also listen to the, to the interesting discussions and, and the plenary sessions. Um, I think obviously at the moment it's a particularly useful time and a particularly important moment to have these discussions. Obviously what we're we're seeing in Israel and Palestine is a really deep uh, crisis um, and one I think that we really need to engage much more closely between European leaders uh, and regional leaders. Over the course of its days, the forum shed light on several topics of interest to the region by holding several panel discussions. I think it's been an opportunity for leaders from uh, the region and from the world, global leaders, to discuss uh, a very, very tragic and serious development in the region. A lot of the focus has, of course, been on what's happening now in Gaza and how the international community and the region can work together to prevent a, a further escalation. For me, it's very important to hear the voices in different countries, talk to decision makers, uh, especially in the Gulf region, and I'm extremely happy for the government of Bahrain to have hosted this important summit once more. I will also be able to do a few uh, bilateral meetings with press and with decision makers in Bahrain after the conference is over. So for me, it has really been a very fruitful time here in Bahrain. Bahrain's success in hosting the Manama Dialogue for the 19th year reflects His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's approach in supporting international efforts to achieve peace, security, stability, and combat extremism, violence, and terrorism. Reporting for Bahrain International, this is Fatma Najm. The GCC Secretary General Jassim Mohammed Libdewi attended the 19th edition of the Manama Dialogue, where he emphasized the significance of this event in addressing political and security issues facing the Middle East security. This Manama Dialogue has reached the level that surpasses uh, similar uh, uh, activities or events. Uh, it has become uh, a, a cornerstone, uh, a, a major uh, highlight of uh, political and security dialogue. Uh, most participants, most leaders in the world uh, make sure that they find time to come and participate in, in this uh, event, which not only provides great sessions and, and workshops and, and uh, forums, but also provides the forum for major bilateral discussions and, and, and dialogue. And uh, it gives you the opportunity to uh, uh, meet leaders from uh, Latin America all the way to uh, Far East uh, in Asia. So again, uh, congratulations and yet again another successful uh, forum. And I look forward to Manama Dialogue uh, 2024.